Welcome to my channel. I have been restoring this old sewing machine. It's a Singer 12 or 12K and it's from the year 1888. Previously, I may have said that it's from 1877, but I sort of made a mix up with the serial number. So it's 1888. It was actually in a pretty good shape when I got it. I was able to sew with it, but some of the decals had worn off and I was worried about the rest of them wearing off when I use it. So I decided to fix everything that I could fix and cover everything with shellac so that it would last in my use. So I haven't filmed it because it has been a long process. I have been working with this machine for the last few months. So now that I'm close to finishing, I can now explain what I've done and why I've done it. I'm not saying that this is the right way of doing it, it's just the way I did it. And you may have opinions on whether you should touch old machines at all, but I try to make my changes so that I wouldn't damage any existing things and to make this machine look as close to new as it would be possible. The last thing that I did yesterday was to fix all these decals in here. They have been pretty chipped. There were parts missing, so I used this acrylic multi-surface hobby paint to carefully, carefully paint in all the missing parts. It was really, really slow process, but I managed to do it and I'm pretty happy on how it turned out. I also repainted all these black parts down here. I have only painted those parts where the paint job was chipped or otherwise damaged. So I didn't really need to do anything around here because this part has been pretty sheltered because it's against the machine. Here basically everything had worn off so I painted this portion here. And these parts were pretty worn so I painted these. I used paint that I made myself. This is a mixture of shellac and linseed oil and <coughs> black and orange stain. Oh, black and orange. Well, the black stain I got was tinted towards the blue and it didn't match my sewing machine. So I added a little bit orange, which warmed the black up so that it matches. And it creates this really nice shiny surface, but I'm a little bit worried that it's probably not dry deep inside. So I think it might need some time to harden because I painted this um, some days ago and the surface doesn't really change when I press it so it might still be a little bit soft but it really doesn't matter that much because I'm going to use the shellac and shellac is basically the same stuff as this and what it does it basically melts into the previous coat so it's going to soften the previous coats anyway. To protect this I'm going to do a little bit something like French polish which I did for the machine bed and the sides where I could reach. I wasn't able to French polish it completely because it's such a difficult shape. So I have this ready-made shellac. I've made shellac previously from raw shellac but the problem is I couldn't get it as clear as this. It always had some little bits that weren't soluble. So I ended up a bit of a bumpier surface. It might work if I would have filtered it better, but I didn't. So I have this cotton and a piece of old sheet. I'm going to soak this in the shellac. and I'm going to protect my owl. Before doing that, I'll add a little bit of tape. I'm using this washi tape that I don't like to protect this part in here. But I don't want to shellac. So I think this is okay. So,
I am soaking this cotton in the shellac and then I'm wrapping it in this piece of cotton. I'm carefully adding some really thin layers of shellac to protect these decals that I fixed. For the machine, I spent several hours doing this, but this one is uh, just a separate part and I think it may take some damage, but it's also almost impossible to polish properly, so I think I'm leaving it here. Also remove the back plate, just to clean it from the inside. And if you want to see like this kind of old sewing machine looks from the back. I'll turn it around. It looks like this. So here you can see the cog is moving when I'm moving the hand wheel. I cleaned a lot of grime from here. It was very hard and I actually had to use my knife to scratch some of it out. But now after I've painted this. I started thinking that this has a part that also opens up. So I started wondering whether I should actually open it up. Because, yeah, it's probably still shut with the shellac. But, if it cracks, it cracks. And at least now I can fix it. Okay, it might be a good idea to open this before starting all this. Necessary to remove this because it seems to come up like the seams, and this screw wasn't necessary at all. So it's just there to hold this thing in place, but you can actually take this off like this. Oh, this is interesting, but yeah, it's full of dust. So let's get to work. Mm, some Q tips. Always oh, good. Sewing machine oil. <sighs> this thing. Oh, it's screwing. I think I'm going to give these bits a good soak. <laughs>
there's a spring in here. Goes inside this bit. And there's the screw. In here. Okay, this is what holds the tension disc in place. So if I lose this screw here, I should be able to get the tension discs out. This is the screw over, over this bit. It has this little, little, little ring underneath this one, so I must not lose it. Otherwise, this bit seems to be strawberry stuck, and I will let it be stuck. So I put these bits into soak. Oh, but I cannot put this one. Okay, this one doesn't go to soak. All the things that don't have paint or shellac will be soaking for a while. Oh, okay, good enough. This bit here, this, this one, this one, this and this, this and this, but not the tiny ring. I will place it over here and I'm for going to forget it so I have to go back to the video to see where I put it okay while well, they are soaking in soapy water I'm going to clean this inside bits it's sewing machine oil which doesn't damage the polish years of dust. I don't know when this has been last opened up. And um, these bits are now pretty clean. I've cleaned these parts by just rubbing with sewing machine oil and Q-tips. I noticed that this one has some Perhaps paint residue, so I'm going to be really, really careful. And I have a little bit of ethanol in here, so let's see where I can take it away. Yep, something is coming off. It's much better. I wonder. Oh, there's so much fine coming. Most 
that alcohol to clean these and I also used it to get rid of this shellac that I have managed to get on the bottom. Actually, I will leave this in here and leave the ethanol to do its job. So this is the part that goes to the tension screw. That'll do. Hold off. Maybe things you see. That's what the most important part. So I'm gonna try to get this as clean as possible. Okay, now it's time to put this back on. So I have been figuring out where everything goes. So um, the first thing is to do is to add oil to all the moving parts and also to help with the screws. So I already oiled these channels in here and I also put some oil to the screws to make them easier to turn. Okay, this goes here, but I think it might be useful to put this back on. So the tents and discs are already in here. On this side. So I'll just slot this in here. And then this one comes down in here. So basically this bit here pulls down this one so it pulls it upwards well sideways when it's in the position and that tightens the tension. Let's just put it so that the screw hole is in the right spot. So you have to be able to turn this bit comes in here. This screw is the tightest of them all, which is really annoying. I can't help it. And finally this would slot in here but I'm not doing right now Did you notice that? Perhaps not. I did. I forget to add the screw that holds this tension thingy in place and I only noticed it when I was editing this video. The machine works without the screw. If you don't open the screw at the top that keeps the tension in place. But if you open it, the tension rod can move and then the tension goes haywire. So I need that screw. I had already cleaned the apartment and I couldn't find the screw anywhere. Luckily, I know this guy in Helsinki who fixes sewing machines. And I went there and I went through a whole big box full of screws. And I managed to find just the right kind of screw to fit the hole. So my machine was saved. But please take care of your screws. And now back to the video. This thing shut because this opens like this.
why isn't this project finished? Well, I decided that as I'm doing it, I should do it properly. And I had cleaned it from the inside and from the end. But when I tried turning the hand crank, I noticed that it was quite stiff. And I realized that I was a little bit enthusiastic with my paint. And some of the paint had seeped in between these two moving parts. And also, I had never opened this and cleaned it from the inside. So, instead of leaving it like it was, I opened it up and cleaned, cleaned this hand cramp from the inside. And I took away all the dirt and scraped off the paint that was hindering the movement. And now it's much more smooth. I wasn't able to get this screw off. I don't have a big enough screwdriver and instead my screwdriver damaged a bit the screw. So I didn't want to try too much. So instead I did what I could and tried to get away as much of the dirt as possible and I added a little bit of oil. Which one is which? This is a really sturdy one. And then there are two small ones. Okay, that is in the right place. Let's go. is this goes over this one with the same screw and now these go together
this machine is ready to be tested. So this is how it looks now. And I'm really happy how it turned out. My main reason of doing this was to protect all the decals from wearing out when I'm going to use it for my historical sewing projects. And I think that this project was successful. All these coats of shellac and wax will protect the decals from wearing out. So I have now some fabric, I have white thread and I have needle installed. The first thing we have to do is to wind the bobbin. This old Singer 12 used these long bobbins and the other end of this bobbin has this little slit in here and this goes to this little thingy in here which locks it in place. But however, the first thing we do is to take the thread and we can secure it between the end of the bobbin and let's see here is the there is the slot so if we leave the end of the thread underneath it stays there okay and we have to first turn this thing here like this and now the wheel runs freely and it doesn't move the needle okay and this thing moves up and connects this rubber wheel to this big wheel. So let's wind the bobbin. Oh, okay. So I'm guiding this thread by hand to make sure that this thread goes in evenly. It can be a little bit narrow in the middle because how it's installed into the shuttle, but I'll explain it later. So let's just find the bobbin. It would be easier if my table was a little bit less slippery. I wonder if I have anything to put underneath. Some kind of rubber would be a good idea. Let's see. I think this is full. This is the shuttle that houses the bobbin. It's really different from modern machines and it's a little bit difficult to thread. So I'll show you how to do it. So first, you take the bobbin and hold it so that the thread comes from below and you take the shuttle so that the thread is pointing towards the two long slits and you then slot the bobbin in place like this and slide it out the first slit like this and then back through the upper slit 
like this. Okay. Then you see these five holes on the other side. These are to adjust the tension. You take the first hole that is closest to the blunt end and you thread your thread through it like this and then you go back and forth until you achieve the tension you want. If you end up on this side you'll then thread the thread through the long slit otherwise you'll just leave it alone you don't need the long slit. So I'll thread it through the middle one and through the last one like so. Okay now I have nice tension and finally I'll put the thread under this spring like this and now the shuttle threading is finished now we can slot it in place the spring is on the top so now we can thread this pretty old lady so this is easy it goes through here between the tension scissors and here you can adjust the tension. This here. and I turn the hand wheel towards myself to make one stitch like this and then when I pull it it lifts up the bobbin thread and now we can close it now it's ready to sew so let's sew a bit This is how it looks, and the wrong side. The needle is quite thick, so it makes those holes, but they'll close up when you iron this. Let's try a longer stitch length. This knob adjusts the stitch length. These are not stitch length numbers, these are just a serial number, but I can move it. It's a bit stiff, but it moves. So let's move it over here. So, this ends my video of this sewing machine and you will be sure to see this later in other videos when I make some stuff with it. See you later, thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Bye!